Hi, I'm Laura Stevens. I'm an interior designer, and I'm here to show you around one of our recently completed projects. I'm going to start off in the kitchen, which is the heart of this busy family home. The kitchen was here originally. It's from Naked Kitchens and it's in their lovely olive colour. Everything was painted white originally. The marble top was here. We really wanted to marry the old with the new in this space. And we decided to keep this as it was, which is a completely open wall space. The client was very lucky in that they'd made a decision early on to put all of the tool storage on the other side of the wall, which allowed us to have fun with styling and accessories and really personalise this side of the kitchen. We picked up some vintage pieces. This was from a little antiques place online, we found on Instagram, and styled it with lots of things to make it feel really unique to them. Uh, this pot is from Joe's home. This is Falcon enamelware, which I love. And we really wanted to kind of pick up on the touches of red, which are throughout the house. Just talking about lighting in a kitchen, well, in any space, but particularly in the kitchen, lighting is really important to think about. You need to layer your lighting. So it's lovely to have decorative lighting, but really important is to have task lighting, which is why we installed this lovely wall light, which is from Holloways of Ludlow, and it's red, which is really fun. Um, but it really provides nice lighting over in this area, which is really key for cooking. And elsewhere in the room, we've got some more contemporary lighting, but it's important to have it at different levels. Many of us eat in our kitchens, realistically, and this client has young children, and it was really important for them to be able to have the connection between people sitting down and eating and then cooking. So this island is really multi-purpose. It's used for cooking, but mostly it's used for dining. And it was made out of reclaimed wood. It's set at a high level, which is quite nice because it really differentiates it from the kitchen counters and is great for actually working on, especially if you're a bit taller. Um, and it fits the stools underneath. Lots of kitchen islands don't have a power supply unless you're starting from scratch. And also the style of this is sort of quite utilitarian, so it didn't really lend itself to having power sockets. But it is really nice to have some lighting, especially because it's used for a dining table um, and it's just really cosy. So a rechargeable lamp is a great investment for that. Um, we actually used um, a remnant from a curtain, which you'll see later, um, which we made into a shade and the fabric is from Fermoy. We're in the middle of the ground floor. The brief for this room was to make it into a really usable space. It used to have a dining table in it, which wasn't used at all because they were sitting on the kitchen island and they wanted to really repurpose this to make it a really cozy, warm family snug. Primarily, we did this by installing a wood burning stove, which gave the whole room a real focal point and the chairs and the coffee table are all centered around that. What made the biggest difference in this space is the paint colors. This was all whitewashed to begin with. It felt very cold and clinical and we wanted to bring in some really tonal colours. The client was really brave, so when I suggested painting the ceilings, she was really up for that. We took the paint colour from the kitchen ceiling into here to connect the space. The ceiling colour is Mink by Paint and Paper Library. The walls in here are a lovely sort of dusky plaster colour. It's called Powder 5, also from Paint and Paper Library. And it's a slightly darker tone than the tone in the kitchen, which is Hammock by Little Green. But it just provides that subtle difference whilst creating a connection between the spaces. So the pieces we chose for this room, we wanted them to be fun and sculptural and interesting. So we went for these chairs, which are from the Socialite family. We covered them in a Robert Keem fabric, which is one of my favorites. And it's got a lovely sort of touch of red in the stripe. The rug is from Nordic Knots. The lamp in the corner is from Soho Home and the coffee table is also from Soho Home. In this corner, we wanted to create some storage, but I really wanted it just to kind of be blended into the background. I didn't want it to be a feature, but we did like 
a little bit of detail. So we put this reeded front on the cabinet. The shelves we built in, it's a really good trick to paint the storage. If you want it to disappear, the same colour as the walls, it just kind of blends away, but it also just looks quite seamless. The handles we chose are these sweet brass handles from Dyke and Dean. So as you walk down from the snug, you get to this lovely open bright space, which is the main living room. The client had put in this panelling, which I think is really clever because it's a take on traditional panelling, but it feels much more contemporary. There's this lovely sofa, which is from Loaf, which literally makes you want to just sit on it and relax. The rug we sourced from Benisuk sort of pink and cream tones, which brings me on to the wall colour. So the wall colour is Joanna from Little Green. It's got a lovely, slightly green undertone to it. So it's not that pure, dazzling, brilliant white, but it works really well with the colours in this room, which is the pinks and the browns and really complements those colours. So part of the reason I think this room really works is because there's room for everything to breathe there isn't actually a lot of furniture in here. The main piece is this lovely sofa. And why it works is it means is because the whole family can sit on it and chat, um, which is very convivial. But other than that, we really wanted just to choose a few statement pieces, such as the coffee table and also this lovely little chair. And this was a purposeful decision to choose something more vintage. We really wanted to make it feel eclectic without it feeling too busy. And that's quite tricky to do, but I think if you can pull it off, it really personalises the space. The pieces that we chosen were quite mid-century. Um, there is a mix, but I think the thread is that the forms are all quite simple. The colours are tonal. There's a lot of wood, but it somehow all works together. So the idea about mixing styles of pieces from different eras extends to the lighting. We chose this quite Mediterranean terracotta pot lamp from Pukki with a nice colourful shade in the corner. And we combined that with a much more sort of statement floor lamp from Anthropology. And we chose this little really sweet, twinkly, um, rechargeable lamp for the coffee table. But again, although they are very different, what links them together are things like the ridges in this terracotta lamp mirrors the on the shade here. So it's finding those little things which thread them together, whether that's the colour, little details, and that's how you can make everything work. So this was the dining table, which was previously in the snug and now sits in the same space as the living area. It's from Heels originally, but it was repurposed. And we really wanted to create a lovely, open, more formal dining space for the family here. Um, the client and I scoured Vintier and she found these fabulous chairs for a steal. We came up with the banquet seating idea a banquet is great as a space saver, but it was also a really nice opportunity to have some fun with the patterns and the colours. The cushions are from Matilda Goad for anthropology. The seat is actually faux leather, so it's super practical for children. And we've got soft ticking stripe from Ian Mankin on the back cushions. The wall lights um, above the banquet are a really nice way to bring in some ambient soft lighting. They've got a touch of glam about them. They're from Tom Dixon. Bringing those layers of lights through to this space is what creates a really lovely atmosphere for the evening. So we've moved down from the dining area into this space, which is a cinema room. At this point, I think it's worth noting that while for a long time, open plan living was super popular, actually for lots of us, it doesn't really work, especially as your children get older and um, you want to have some more separate space. And what works so well in this house is that everything is connected but there are different levels. We've also added a curtain so you can screen yourself off and have a really sort of cosy separate space. So when you come down into this room, we wanted to create a really nice members club vibe in here. It was literally a white box, it had no character. We painted the walls and the ceilings in bow work, which is sort of a plaster finish 
paint to add some character and texture. The client really fell in love with this fabric, which is from Mulberry. It's super expensive. So we were going to cover the sofa in it, but it was out of budget. So what we decided to do was put that Mulberry fabric on these seats, which come down from the stairs and add those little bolsters. And what it does is it just creates uh, a seating space for the cinema, which is actually created by a projector on the ceiling. And we left a blank wall on the other side of the room. So it creates actually a sort of tiered seating space for the cinema. The sofa was from sofa.com and we found the table from Vinteria again and that was a steal. We've bought in again one of these little rechargeable lights for some cosy atmospheric lighting and the rug is from the White Company. A trick I use a lot to elevate soft furnishings in an inexpensive way is adding a trim. And um, on the curtain here on the leading edge, I added this onion style bobble trim, which is really nice. And we tied that in with a fringe on the sofas, um, which just are a nice special touch. The client had lots of artwork, which was spaced all over the house, but didn't really work separately. So we decided down here to create a gallery wall with all of their artwork. And we had real fun here choosing what was going to go um, on the wall, but also really mixing it up. We didn't have the budget to buy new artwork. So the client had really lovely kind of personal bits and pieces like this card, which she framed, and this little piece of artwork from her son, which is so cute. And it just fills in gaps, but it also makes it really personal. So I just really encourage you just to go for it. Even something that you want to do yourself is really elevated by framing it. Having the same frames really ties everything together. We're in the hallway and hallways can be really challenging, even for interior designers, because it's hard to create character and interest in a hallway. But it's so important because it's the entrance to your home and it really sets the tone for the whole house. So we started off with the original flooring as our kind of jumping off point. It's a little bit weathered and warm, but I love that because it tells the story of the house. The colour references in the flooring were really important. So it has this sweet kind of yellow tile, which we took through to the runner, which is one that I designed in collaboration with Bombay Sprout and it just really lifts the whole space. We added panelling for character and this panelling mirrors the style of panelling in the living room, which the client put in. They really needed a little bit of space for a console and we got around that because it's narrow by adding a shelf. And again, it's got that really good detail. There's a curtain over the door, which adds coziness and warmth. And finally, we went for a really oversized kind of old school pendant light, which gives a lovely soft glow. And it's from Mulan. We bought some warmth into the walls and the panelling in the paint colours. Uh, and these are sort of lovely earthy neutrals. This is Mushroom by Little Green. And above the panelling is Stock, also by Little Green. And that's taken all the way up the house. We're in the guest room and this is a beautiful space, blessed with, again, lots of lovely period features. The challenge here was to create a sense of warmth. It was painted white. It felt quite cold and clinical. And we created a focal point by um, creating this lovely shapely headboard. The fabric is uh, a stripe by Otterling de Vries. The paint colour is really key to the whole scheme. It's Palmer Grey by Little Green and we really saturated the walls and the woodwork with that colour to create this sort of really all-encompassing effect. The ceiling is painted in dead salmon. It creates a warmth, it brings the ceiling down a little um, and it is just a really nice way to draw the eye upwards at the beautiful ceiling raises. If space affords in a guest room, it's really nice to make guests feel sort of comfortable, almost like they're in a boutique hotel, um, and to make sure they both have bedside tables. It's nice for symmetry with lamps on. These lamps were from Soho Home, and the bedside tables are from Clock House. This bedroom was blessed with a bath. Um, 
it was here when the clients brought me on board. We painted it in a really lovely chocolate brown to tie it together with the rest of the scheme. And it's just such a nice, luxurious touch to the space. We decided to put Zellig tiles behind it in the same color as the Parma Grey on the walls. And it just creates a focal point and some really nice reflection. And we found this little stool from Vinteria, which is really cute. In a guest bedroom, you don't actually need much storage. So we needed a little bit. We thought, well, why not make it statement? So we built uh, this wardrobe, we added this cute bobbin trim which ties in with the bobbins on the bedside table and added the chocolate brown handles from Matilda Goad. The client found the chair and footstool on eBay and we recovered it in this fab Flora Soames check. The commode with the marble top um, is antique and the client found it um, in a little shop just at the end of her road. We're in the client's main bedroom. Um, it's in the loft conversion at the top of the house. It's a lovely haven. The client's gone for a really beautiful, big, oversized bed. And although it fills a lot of the space, don't be afraid of that because actually playing with those proportions really works and really gives a sense of luxe. And how they've worked that with the lighting is as you've, they've used wall lights. So when space is at a premium, that's a really good trick. The lights are from Graham and Green. The bed is from sofa.com. Pink and green is always a lovely color scheme. It works every time in all different tones. We've got on the walls pink ground, um, which works really well with the sage green upholstery of the bed. The curtains behind me work perfectly with the scheme. They're from House of Hackney, and that leads me on to the ensuite bathroom. The colour scheme is continued in here. It's got a slightly earthier feel in the pink, which is Roman plaster on the walls. The tiles are from Burton May. And what's really nice about this space is the client has really elevated it from a functional space um, to feeling really luxurious. And they've done this by adding little touches like the artwork on the wall, the light, the cute little brass cabinet. Don't be afraid to bring in things which you wouldn't expect to have in a bathroom, such as this really cute stool, which is actually from HomeSense. The clients managed to fit in a little basin into a corner and it's so clever because the architect has got a cutaway round um, window which means that the light floods through and there's no need for a wall light. You don't always need to do a built-in vanity unit. Um, a cost-effective way of creating space is just to have a stone top and to put in a pretty piece of fabric underneath. I really hope you enjoyed looking around this family home as much as I enjoyed carrying out this project. Thank you so much for watching.